In the vibrant world of coral reefs, the cleaner rasa and reef fish share a neat relationship. Imagine a bustling underwater city where the cleaner rasa operates a 24-7 cleaning service. Its clients? The reef fish. But what's the price for such a dedicated service, you ask? Well, the cleaner rasa gets a hearty meal out of it. No, they're not serving fish and chips down there. Instead, the cleaner rasa feasts on the parasites that have made the reef fish their unwitting hosts. It's a win-win situation. The reef fish get a spick and span body, free from annoying parasites, while the cleaner rasa fills its belly. It's like having your cake and eating it too, only in this case, the cake is a parasite. Yum? The cleaner rasa even offers a deluxe package that includes cleaning the inside of the reef fish's mouth and gills. Talk about thorough. It's a trust exercise like no other. The reef fish opens wide, and the cleaner rasa, brave as ever, dives right in. This unique partnership isn't just beneficial for our two main characters. It also contributes to the overall health of the coral reef ecosystem. By keeping reef fish parasite free, the cleaner rasa helps ensure the population stays strong and healthy. So the next time you think about skipping out on spring cleaning, remember the cleaner rasa. It's proof that a little bit of tidying up can go a long way. A clean fish is a happy fish. Now let's turn to the world of plants and insects where myrmecophyte plants and ants share a home. Imagine being a plant in the wild, constantly on the menu for hungry herbivores. Well, for the myrmecophyte plants, they've found a unique solution to this problem. They've enlisted an army of bodyguards, and these aren't just any bodyguards. They're ants. Yes, you heard that right. Ants. These tiny creatures might seem insignificant, but they're the secret weapon of the myrmecophyte plants. When herbivores come munching, the ants spring into action, biting and stinging the intruders until they decide that the salad bar is closed. So, what's in it for the ants? Well, the myrmecophyte plants aren't just hiring these ants out of the kindness of their hearts, or leaves, should we say. In return for their protection, the plants provide the ants with food and shelter. They've got specialized structures called domatia, which are like little ant apartments and they produce nectar and other nutritious goodies for the ants to eat. So it's a win-win situation. The plants get protection, the ants get food and shelter, and they all live happily ever after. Well, except for the herbivores. They're probably not too thrilled about the situation. This relationship between myrmecophyte plants and ants is an incredible example of mutualism in nature. It's a testament to the fact that sometimes the best defense is a good offense. It's like a mini ecosystem of their own. On a lighter note, let's talk about the love story between bees and flowers. Picture this. A world where flowers bloom in a riot of color, and bees buzz about flitting from one bloom to another. It's not just a pretty sight, it's a dance of survival, a tango of mutualism. In this dynamic duo, the bees are like couriers. They're on a mission to collect nectar, a sweet liquid produced by flowers. This nectar is the bees' primary source of energy. But in the process of sipping this sugary treat, bees inadvertently pick up pollen, tiny grains required for plant reproduction. Now, here's where the flowers come in. They're like the post boxes waiting for the bee's delivery. When a bee lands on a flower, some of the pollen from the bee's body rubs off onto the flower's stigma, the part of the flower that receives pollen. This process, known as pollination, allows flowers to produce seeds and fruit. It's a crucial step in the life cycle of flowering plants. But the exchange doesn't just stop there. Flowers in return provide bees with nectar and pollen, which bees use as food for their colonies. It's a win-win situation, really. So the next time you see a bee buzzing around a flower, remember, it's not just a bug on a plant. It's a crucial partnership, a dance of survival, a love story that's been blooming for millions of years. The birds and the bees have nothing on this relationship. Back to the sea where the goby fish and pistol shrimp have a unique survival pact. Dive with me into the world of the goby fish and its trusty partner, the pistol shrimp. The goby fish, with its sharp eyes, stands guard, while the nearly blind pistol shrimp is a master builder, constructing a safe burrow for both. It's a bit like the ultimate home security system, with the goby fish as the vigilant security guard and the pistol shrimp as the skilled contractor. Just imagine, if you will, a world where you're nearly blind. That's the reality for the pistol shrimp. But does it hold him back? Not one bit. This little crustacean is an architect of the sea, building elaborate homes in the sand. Meanwhile, the goby fish with its keen eyesight keeps an eye out for danger. When a predator approaches, the fish flicks its tail to signal the shrimp to retreat into the burrow. It's a silent alarm system that works flawlessly, time and time again. 
This relationship is a beautiful demonstration of cooperation in the wild, a testament to the incredible ways that different species can support and protect one another. The goby fish and the pistol shrimp show us that friendships can form in the most unlikely of places, and that teamwork, even between different species, is a powerful survival tool. A perfect example of friendship that sees beyond disabilities. In the African plains, the buffalo and cattle egret have a relationship that's all about give and take. Imagine being a massive African buffalo, lumbering across the savanna, a magnet for pesky insects. Now imagine having a personal bug bouncer, a feathered friend to keep those irritants at bay. That's where the cattle egret comes in. The cattle egret, a stocky white bird, has a knack for bug control. These birds perch comfortably on the buffalo's back, feasting on the insects that hover around or attach to the buffalo. With each peck, they provide a service to the buffalo, ridding them of bothersome bugs. But what's in it for the egret, you ask? Well, the buffalo, with its large frame and slow, deliberate movement, stirs up insects as it grazes. This makes for an all-you-can-eat buffet for the egret. The buffalo's movement exposes insects, worms, and other small creatures that the egret wouldn't have been able to reach otherwise. The egret's presence also comes with another perk for the buffalo. With their keen eyesight, egrets often alert buffaloes to approaching predators, adding a layer of security. So, you see, this relationship is a win-win. The egret gets a steady food supply and a mobile perch, while the buffalo gets a personal pest control service and a lookout. It's a classic example of mutualism in the wild. It's like having a personal pest control service. Finally, let's talk about the unlikely friendship between crocodiles and plover birds. Yes, you heard right. These feathery little dentists, known as plover birds, have set up a dental clinic right inside the jaws of crocodiles. Now, that's what you call a high-risk profession. You see, plover birds have a unique diet. They feed on the leftover meat stuck in the teeth of crocodiles. Now, you might wonder, why would a crocodile, the apex predator of the water world, allow a tiny bird to play around its teeth? Well, it's a win-win situation. Crocodiles, despite their fierce reputation, have a soft spot for good oral hygiene. They understand the importance of keeping their pearly whites clean. And what better way to get a dental cleanup than to have these small birds perform the job? The birds get a free meal, the crocs get a clean set of chompers. Talk about a toothsome deal. Interestingly, this dental appointment is not a one-time affair. It's a symbiotic relationship that has evolved over the course of time. The crocodile gets its teeth cleaned, reducing the risk of infections, and the plover bird gets a safe place to eat without the fear of becoming someone else's meal. And that's what makes this partnership between crocodiles and plover birds so fascinating. It's a tale of trust, survival, and dare I say, friendship in the wild. So the next time you see a crocodile flashing its teeth, remember, it might just be showing off its latest dental cleanup. Who knew crocodiles cared about oral hygiene?